So recently I went and sold my 8020 rig. Check the video description for more on why, but whilst I was sad to see it go, I was not worried to see it go, because standing by was the cockpit I used prior to that, the GT Omega ART. Now I've had really positive experiences of the ART, but there's probably no better way to sum it up than to say I was only willing to sell the 8020 rig because I knew I had this cockpit ready to step back into, and I knew my racing wouldn't actually suffer for it. If I'd sold my Fanatec wheelbase and went back to a Logitech wheel, I would really struggle and my results would show it. So to say that stepping back into the GT Omega rig gives me no cause for hesitation is a really meaningful perspective. Despite the ART costing less than half of a setup I just sold, there's really no difference to my lap times and race results, and that itself is some really high praise for this cost-friendly kit. So let's say you're on a prowl for your first proper cockpit and the GT Omega ART catches your eye. How far can you push this kit, and are you going to need to upgrade from it in future? Where does the ART sit on the scale of price versus performance? Let's dig into that. Just quickly before we begin, there's a GT Omega affiliate link in the description that'll get you 5% off at a checkout. Just click that and then through to your own region and you can keep that 5% in your back pocket if you get anything. And thanks to those who have already done so. First, let's address how this cockpit does for competitiveness and consistency because that's very important for me and no doubt for you too. I absolutely want to win, especially league races where the points matter and there's no second chances. These days the word esports is buzzing around everyone's head and the ache that you feel when you're looking at all the amazing kit you can get now and the fixation that spending more and more money will turn you into a winning machine is real and I feel that and all. That's why I sincerely advise that if you're firmly holding out for a top of the line rig because you think anything less won't make you as competitive as everyone around you, this isn't the case most of the time. You can hit 99% of your competitive potential on the ART. I honestly believe that. I take part in the Apex Racing League GT Championship on iRacing and Tom McMahon of Evo SR has won that championship three times previously with a Fanatec Club Sport wheelbase on a GT Omega frame. In everything, there's a point beyond which spending more money has vastly diminishing returns and I consider the ART to be right on that apex of most competitive per pound spent. The second consideration to make is what wheel and pedal hardware you've got or plan to have in the near future. If you're to be using any wheelbase up to and including the Fanatec Club Sport or any of the Thrustmaster lineup for that matter, then the ART is perfect for you. Pedals up to and including the Fanatec Club Sport V3s are also perfectly suitable. With mine, I use a Fanatec CSL Elite wheelbase and Club Sport V3 pedals with a very firm brake, and I find no cause for complaint in terms of rigidity or adjustment range. But if you've got imminent plans for top level equipment like a direct drive wheelbase or hoisting valve pedals, then you really should commit to an 8020 to ensure you're getting the full use out of them. Thirdly, just think about how far you want your overall budget to go. The lower cost is one of the big draws for the ART. My previous 8020 rig with a triple monitor stand was around a thousand pounds all in. My ART setup would be around £500 if I had the GT Omega triple stand to go with it. No matter how you slice it, if there was any measurable difference in my race pace between driving an 8020 and driving the ART, it certainly isn't a difference I'd give up the £500 I've saved to resolve it. That'd be an extra 500 quid you could put towards your wheel, pedals, screens or accessories, all of which would have a bigger impact on your competitiveness. So, by now it's pretty clear that I've got a strong fondness for the ART, but let me explain my perspective on things. I am totally the kind of guy that really respects things that can do 90% of a job for 50% of the cost. This itself brings its own satisfaction to me. I just love things that perform well without weighing heavily on the wallet, and that is exactly what the ART is all about. Even so, there are compromises with everything in this life. Let's see what limitations the ART system has, which you might want to consider. Firstly, although the ART's wheel column and pedal plate have very little flex, there is still some. Whatever movement is here is really minor and simply not noticeable when driving, but it's there if you go looking for it by eye. 
Interestingly, because the ART is basically a box-shaped structure full of straight lines, it's possible to brace and strengthen it further still with DIY solutions as demonstrated by fellow user Carl Gosling, whose proof of this concept is linked in the description. I recommend going and checking it out. I can totally see how some simple bracing can lock this frame down hard and really cut out what little movement is there. I've never felt the need to do this, but I know some of you love to enhance and optimize, so this will be right up your street. Whilst you can mount a single monitor or TV via an integrated accessory to the ART rig, there's no option for a triple monitor mount like you can get with some 8020s. But if you want triples, as most people do, you can get a standalone triple monitor mount that's physically separate from the ART. Or you can get a table and fix a desktop triple mount to it like I've done here. It's always a good idea to have standalone monitors that are physically separate, so this isn't much of a problem, but worth knowing if you don't yet have triples and are planning to go free wide. The range of seats made by GT Omega that pair with the ART frame are all reclinable, and being as GT Omega is also a gaming chair company, this really should be their bread and butter. The one I've got, the RS9, is seemingly the sportiest one of the bunch, and maybe not the comfiest, on the shoulders especially, but feels pretty racy. The RS6 looks less aggressively moulded and a bit more suitable for the average adult, and of course there's a wider XL seat for NASCAR drivers. However, whilst convenient, reclining seats can introduce some flex, so if you wanted to eliminate that, you could instead opt for a hard-backed rally or race seat from a motorsport vendor instead, as the ART's mountain rails should accommodate it fine. Lastly, because I've drawn so many comparisons against the 8020 rig that I just sold, construction time is worth touching on. It maybe takes two hours maximum to get the ART put together, and that's being pretty laid back. Adjustment of the steering column and pedals is also much quicker. If it's got to be removed from the house, then it can be detached in half, leaving you with two pretty lightweight, manageable pieces. If you needed this thing to be mobile, then you can also get casters from the shop too. In summary, I genuinely do love this cockpit and consider it to be in that sweet spot of price versus performance. In saying this, I do it having gone from an ART to an 8020 to an ART again, so I hope that my opinion on this does hold some water. This isn't one of those situations where I haven't experienced something better than the ART. I've been well beyond it in terms of price, and I have that experience to draw on. I plan to stick with this ART rig for a long time yet, as it gives me all that I need to race well at a price that makes me feel good about it at the same time, especially when that money is really needed elsewhere. If you've got a direct drive wheel, then yeah, you'll be needing a frame that's much costlier. I am not suggesting otherwise, but most of us use mid-range equipment that's well within the ART's capability. So if what you really care about is having a chassis that can help you be competitive, but for a good price, then in that regard, the ART proves itself to be very worthy against other cockpits twice for cost. I haven't had to look very far to find numerous drivers in my various circles that are using a GT Omega ART. So if that's you, if you've got one of these cockpits, then do share your experiences in the comments section so that people browsing for opinions can stumble upon yours and read all about it. Feel free, if you're watching, to ask questions in the comments about mine. Please remember to check out the discount link in the description if you head into GT Omega's site and let me know how you get on with yours if you do. Like and subscribe if I've been helpful, and thanks for the support. You guys are great. See you next time.